my name is Justin Marker. Welcome to the ASUS RG G750JZ laptop overview. Let's get into it, shall we? Hello. So, as I said, this is an overview, and I've had this laptop for over a year now, so I thought it'd be right. So, on the top, we have a soft matte black finish that ASUS has put on multiple G series in the past, as well as an ASUS logo that's brushed plastic to look like aluminum and a white LED light. Now it says Republic with gamers on it and I don't like that. I much prefer a more professional workstation instead of a gaming notebook. So I covered up with a sticker of my college mascot. You can probably see that line on it still, but that's for you to decide if you like it or not. Asus takes a much more subtle design with the LED lights and I, I appreciate that a lot because a lot of other laptops or other companies use a lot of flashy color LEDs to show that they're high performance and ASUS lets the specs and the performance tests speak otherwise. Now moving on to the back, ASUS has two independent cooling fans, both with their own heat sinks, one going to the GPU, one going to the CPU, and the sounds of them are really quiet even during high performance gaming sessions. I actually had to crank the fan speeds up to 100% to hear what they actually have sound because I've never gotten to that high. I think the highest I got them it's about 60% while I'm rendering videos. On the left side of this laptop we have a Kensington lock, two USB 3.0 ports, a DVD slash Blu-ray combo drive, and a full SSD card reader. You flip it over to the front there's five LED light indicators. On the right side of this laptop we have a headphone and microphone jack two more USB 3.0 ports, a Thunderbolt port, which is very rare to find on most laptops, but is very helpful for the creative professionals who want to use it as, for an example, I can use it at my college where I have a Cintiq that I can plug into that, that port, but it also works as another display port. Then we have an HDMI out port, we have an Ethernet port, and then we have the power port. Moving around to the back, we have a removable battery pack, an inlay subwoofer that gives some sounds of a little extra bass, and a removable back panel that if you wish or so desire to change around your RAM, hard drive, or SSD, you can do so. Opening this laptop up, we have a sleek and classy design that goes with the exterior of the build with a brushed aluminum body and a 17.3 inch screen. And around the bezel, we have a stylized web camera and I wish this camera could be a little more high quality for the price of the laptop but it's not a drawback at all. And while the 1920 by 1080p resolution TN panel might be a drawback for some consumers, ASUS is not the first company to sacrifice viewing angles and resolution for 1080p native display at a mobile factor. For what it's worth I don't find that as much of a trade-off but I'll let you guys decide for yourself. While the chiclet style keyboard embedded in the brushed aluminum is a fantastic implementation, I love the longer than normal travel distance for the keys on top of the white LED backlight panel so you can see what you're doing at night. On top of all that, there's a function keys on the top row, and to enable that, you hold down the FN key at the bottom left corner of the keyboard and press whatever which one you want. I personally prefer, as a helpful hint, the F9 key to disable or re-enable the trackpad. Also the nice big touchpad has fantastic feel to it and fantastic mechanical keys to it. Other laptops have a sleek panel that there are no individual buttons and that's just yuck. The main speakers are placed cryptically underneath the display and the bezel of the monitor. Now the Windows 8 operating system is installed on one of the dual SSDs, thus making the boot up real fast. So you can see in this video where I test the boot up, and it's about 24 seconds of when it goes from fully shut off to up and operational. Now let's talk about the specs of the ASUS ROG G750JC Notebook. First up, we have an Intel Core i7-4700HQ processor, quad-core, eight-threaded, beast of a processor. It runs at 24 gigahertz, but can be boosted up to 3.4 gigahertz if using Turbo Boost. This is partnered with 24 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, which ensures you to have extra RAM and CPU power even though you're doing something else. 
The other powerful component to this laptop is the overclocked NVIDIA GeForce GTX 880M mobile gaming graphics card. This mobile graphics card has a fully enabled GK104 GPU running inside of it. To give you a comparison of power to this graphics card, it's relatively similar to the desktop version of a 770. With one key difference, the 8080M trades a memory speed to keep the 4GB frame buffer. Other components of this laptop is a 1TB mechanical hard drive, an onboard end killer wireless, and a 128 dual SSDs, which I have a little trouble about these because out of the box they come installed with the Windows or Windows 8 installed on one of the SSDs and the other ones unpartitioned. I wish they could just partition them together and save a lot less hassle. Right now I'm running out of space on my C drive because I didn't combine them when I first got my laptop. So I recommend for any of you people, if you purchase those laptop, the second you open up the laptop, try to partition those both drives, both of the SSDs into one drive and then have the C drive be completely full. You'll lose a lot less data. Trust me on that. And here is a couple of benchmarks performance-wise for this laptop. On top of those benchmarks, I'll show you some video footage of me playing some video games with the frame rate captured in the top left corner of the screen, and I also will show you some of my video settings in the game. In the videos, you'll see Arma 2 Daisy Overpock, you'll see CSGO, Portal 2, Borderlands the pre-sequel, and Rocket League. And then for some of the benchmarks, there's 3D Mark, and then Cinema Bench R15. Why I do this, why I'm doing the videos and showing instead of just plastering Excel spreadsheets, is most people want to see what performance they can actually get out of games. I know when I was looking for a laptop such as this one, I was very interested in the frames per second that I could get and other things, but I also wanted to see the performance that it could do. I want to go over one thing while these videos play in the background. I forgot to put it in while I was recording my video, so this is a perfect time. Battery life. It's very important because when you're going on a mobile platform, you can get on this laptop about six hours to five hours of battery life if you're just working on like a Excel sheet, Word document, you name it. Light, very light work. But if you're using the GeForce graphics card, if you're cranking out, like trying to edit together videos, you're probably going to get about three-ish hours around that area. So. That is definitely a key factor you have to put in. I didn't realize that battery life was that limited even while you're working on a Word document because I can be in a college class, I can be at my college library and realize, oh, my battery's about to die, I need to go plug it in. That's a little hassle just to bring like the power cord and everything. But again, that is not to deter you from buying it, but just to let you know, Heavy workload, about three to four hours, maybe even a little less, depending on what you're doing. And then light workload, probably five to six hours of battery life. It really comes down to who this project is for. It does put a perfect medium between a sleek, classic mobile platform to a quite large, high-performance desktop. But with a 10-pound weight to it, it doesn't become that portable. I much prefer to have a light, sleek laptop to slide into my backpack instead of trying to cram this puppy into mine. So what I would offer if you're a college student looking to buy this laptop, if you really need the laptop, go for it, but I would also get like maybe a few hundred dollar, just another notebook to take class, like notes in class and bring into class if you so desire. You don't have to, I don't have it, I like it, but it's up to you to decide. 
And if you're looking for a powerhouse machine that offers fantastic performance and not is very reliable, I'd highly recommend this laptop to anyone. And I bought it not for the gaming mechanic. Yes, I do play video games with some of my friends and I crank the settings up to almost high, but that's not the main reason I bought it. The main reason I bought it was to become more professional, to do 3D modeling, to do 3D rendering, video editing, all that such in the digital media field. So I highly recommend this laptop to anyone looking for a workstation on top of a gaming platform. As I did say, this laptop has a very sleek and classy design. I look very high when I was looking through all the workstations known to man to purchase a laptop. I really love this build and how sleek and design it is, even though it has such beefy power performance to it. So as always, thanks for watching the video. If you liked the video, like it, dislike it or you disliked it, and comment and tell me what your thoughts were. And as always, thanks for watching. Peace.